Hello, I'm Sean and I've been a heating engineer for many, many years now and I'd just like to run through a few pointers as to use your heating efficiently. What we have here is a Worcester boiler and this is generally one of the most popular boilers that we have. Connected to your boiler is your radiators connected through with pipework and there's a number of settings on this that controls the temperature of the radiators and the output of the radiators. The best temperature where the boiler works most efficiently is around 55 degrees. With that in mind, you need to be comfortable. So I would suggest dropping the temperature down to 55 degrees, seeing how the temperatures are and how comfortable you are, and if, if it's not quite warm enough, just push it up in increments until you get a comfortable heat in. The hot water, on this is set at 60 degrees, which is about the norm for that. If possible, you could drop it down, but not too much. But generally, washing up, doing dishes, especially Sunday, after all your dirty pots and pans, then we tend to leave it at 60 degrees. Also on this boiler, you notice the pressure gauge. Now, sometimes this pressure gauge can drop. Now, there's something we can do about that, and we can look at our user handbook. Sometimes on the fascia, it'll tell you how to repressurize your boiler. But on this particular model, there's a little lever underneath. And what I can do, I can pull down on this little lever, which will allow more water to enter the system on the boiler. Try not to cover your radiators with anything that's going to stop that heat emitting from them. So tea towels, wet towels, uh, anything will stop that, even as far as furniture. So move your furniture away just to give this airflow up through the radiators and in front so it can convect the heat out. What you'll also find with a radiator is that it could be hot at the bottom and cold on the top and this is probably that the radiator has got some air in it. So when there's air in the radiator we can bleed the radiator. So what we need is a bleed key, a bit of tissue and we'll just insert the key in ever so slightly and turn it until we get a drop of water and close it off. Also on your radiator, you probably have a thermostatic radiator valve. Now we call it a TRV. This controls the air temperature around the radiator and shuts the radiator on and off. Now depending on what you set this at is what temperature this radiator is going to stay on. So if we lower this down to around about 3, which is probably around 18 degrees, then again it's going to save us money and we can turn these down in bedrooms where ideally bedroom temperature around 18 degrees. We can lower that down or even further to two and still feel comfortable. This is a very popular type of programmer. When you're not at home, you can program this to come on and off at certain times. So you haven't got that heating on constantly. What the room thermostat does is controls the air temperature that will turn your heat in on and off, so it'll turn your whole system on and off. So you'll generally find this in hallways and in colder parts of the house. What we do is we'll set this to a comfortable temperature. Now generally around room temperature, 21 degrees, 20 degrees, we'll drop it. And very often if you lower this by a few degrees, or even if you lower it by one degree, can save you money and energy. So, just to summarise, make sure that the heating control temperature on the boiler is lower. Aim for 55 degrees if you can, but make sure that it's comfortable for you. Your thermostatic radiator valves and your radiators, try not to cover them. Keep them free to let that warm air circulate around the room. Also, your room thermostat, lower that down if possible. 